Hey guys, welcome to our first SDMA podcast. Um, today, we're going to be doing a Halloween themed podcast. We have some questions lined up for some of our teachers from SDMA, and we're going to go around and tr- introduce ourselves first. My name is Paul, and I am the violin and viola teacher. Today, I am dressed up um, as Crollo. Crollo is a, uh, a guy from my favorite um, anime that I watch and so I'm Crollo. Hi I'm Carol. Um, I teach piano at SDMA. I'm also the director so I am dressed up as a cactus and it's on my head and also it makes me look really poofy here. Hi, I'm Mark. So I'm the piano, another piano instructor at SDMA, and I'm also the percussion and drum teacher. I'm not dressed up today, but if I was, I probably would have dressed up as ooh, either a pirate or a pumpkin. Those are always fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Alana. I sing, and I'm a panda. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Zishan. I'm a new teacher, piano teacher, also from SDMA, and I didn't dress up because I'm pregnant, but if I'm dressed up, like wear the costume, I'm maybe dressed up as queen. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, yeah. Our very first question is... What is the scariest or creepiest sounding piece that you guys know? Yeah. Let's start with Mark. This one's kind of hard. Let me see. Are we allowed to pick film scores? <laughs> yeah, anything. Anything so, that you know of or you might play before. Okay, so my, my brother and I are actually film composers. So we are always up to date on like watching new film scores and everything. And so recently there have been a ton of like horror movies that have come out and those are always creepy and everything. But there was, I don't know if anybody knows the the Hulu show that came out maybe a few months um, before quarantine and everything. It was called, oh my gosh, what was it called exactly? It was the show about the, um, about the nuclear site Oh, um, someone told me about it. There have been so many movies about it. What was the Hulu one The called? Cher- Cherry... Chernobyl. Uh, there you go. Yeah, Yeah. not not <laughs> Chernobyl Diaries or nothing like that. Just the, the Hulu series. I think it was like eight parts or something. But the composer, she used um, really weird noises of actual like nu- nuclear reactors. And so she twisted the sounds for the whole score. And it was really like haunting sounding and just it was it was really eerie it was like something that you've never heard before so it stood out and even if you didn't notice it was part of the score or like the sound design part of it it was it felt like creepy and it was it was really effective yeah. wow that's interesting yeah so um mark do you since you're a percussion teacher do you know something called um water it's a water something and then uh-huh. um it's um you put water inside and there's like metal bars on the sides and then you can slide it with a, a string um a bow yeah i think um so it's called a water phone and yes it's exactly that you put water in it and then you you swirl it around and while you're bowing the i don't have any i should get one of those <laughs> but if you, it's got like a bunch of brass tubes that are coming out of it and then wow. Um, you use the yeah like a violin bow or cello bow and then right. you can like bow across all of the all of the pipes and then when you swirl the water it'll bend the notes and everything um yeah I used one in one musical that i did i forget in the pit uh-huh. yeah how there big was, is um, this thing they have two big. different sizes um okay. it's like maybe 12 to 15 inches wide can you carry it around oh yeah it's something not, you can like yeah yeah uh-huh. You just gotta yeah. remember empty the water after. <laughs> yeah, first time I saw one was um I think like 2011 at IU. I was playing for the symphonic band, and then there was a composer who was visiting and then required one of those, 
So oh, it's, yeah. I think they bought one. Um, it was like the only one in the whole school and it was really creepy sounding. Yeah, those are neat. Yeah, mm -hmm. those, they're a lot of fun to play. <laughs> yeah. I was asking if you can carry it because then you can walk around with that thing. And just go yeah, play. I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> life, life, like poor sounding stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, going off of Mark uh, talking about film, I know a lot of composers like to use strings instruments to mm -hmm. um, to make like you know horror sounding, and we'll save that for later. There's a question mm -hmm. later that um, that we can use yeah. for that. <laughs> um, but um, regarding horror sounding or scary sounding, I think um, of all the composers I know of. I would probably pick Hindemith as one of them um, for viola. He he has some really cool music, but then he also has some really, really interesting music. Um, I like him as a composer. He's definitely he's definitely one of my top up there, but he like his uh, viola sonata opus uh, 25 number one is a is a pretty interesting solo viola piece and um that definitely is a on the on the, i would say on the scary um scary side it's also scary to play <laughs> it's very <laughs> different <laughs> but yeah but yeah so let's see alana what do you think yes oh one creepy song that i've been thinking about a lot it's not scary it just sounds cool and it's a K-pop song called Put It Straight. And they have a Halloween version of it. And it's beautiful. Who's it by? Who's the singer? Um, or the group? G-Idol. Oh, OK. Cool. Yes. So they have Is a music group? video for this? Yeah. There's six members. It's on YouTube. Very cool. Very cool. Also, oh, that you know that song "Creep." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, really Susan, what's something? Yeah, yeah. Susan, what's something that you um, that is uh, scariest or creepiest sounding piece that you know of? Well, um, the piece that I chose not really scared or creepy, but you can fill in imagination. And also for the player, uh, it's kind of like hard. You don't know you, what you're going to think in those four <laughs> minutes. So it's a 433 seconds by John Cage. So it is a very famous piece. Also, that is the icon for John Cage. John Cage. Um, so that is the most famous one by audience to know him. It's like a, for entire piece that is all silence without any playing. So uh, all the people, uh, I mean, the audience and the performers, they all fell in like a sink. Like a, if for me, that is kind of like a scared piece to play because it's really awkward that you just sit in front of the piano and don't do anything. It just feel very weird. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen anyone you perform it in public? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet, right? We should be the first one. Right, but we always joking in the school that uh, someone need to perform in the recital. If we have like a five more minutes or 10 more minutes need to come play and one hour recital, maybe go with <laughs> You don't need to memorize anything. That's true. <laughs> yeah, for anybody watching this video and you want to impress somebody and say you know how to play a piano piece <laughs> you can just yeah. go to your piano and sit down for <laughs> four minutes and what is that 33 seconds four, right seconds. Yeah. yeah yeah and you can just sit down and then everybody that's listening to you will just be thinking to themselves what is going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a very I, i've i've heard of it Mm -hmm. um, and I think they what did they use like a little watch or something like a timer on the side and they would like watch that time to make sure they're like around a dot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, anybody else have any any last um, minute? I have, I have a funny creepiest? one. 
Um, so Zishan's um, comment reminded me of the new video that since the coronavirus was out, um, there's a corona coronavirus, what is it, like sanitizing etude on the piano, if you guys have seen it. Uh, so it's it's scary in the sense that um, that this is happening, but um, it's basically a guy sitting, or I don't know who wrote it, but um, just like using the sanitizing wipe and wiping everything and then doing glissandos mm. up and down. There's an actual music too, sheet music. It's pretty cool. So, um, is that good the, for the piano? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't try it at home. <laughs> Please don't try that at home. If you're watching this, don't do not use Lysol your... wipes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, the one that's associated with Halloween and that's like famous with any pi uh, not pi um, vampire theme will be on the organ for Bach, um, Toccata and Fugue in D minor on the organ. It's the most famous one. Um, I sh I'm sure it's scary to play. I've played the piano duet version of it. Um, I don't really like it because it really, I think on the organ, when you have the accumulating sounds going on where you're just holding, it's really weird and cool that your whole, like your whole body chamber vibrates with the sound. But on the piano, it doesn't have that effect anymore. But anyways, mm. that, that would be a Halloween piece. That would be. Yep. That would be. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's go on to the second question. And the second question is, what is the scariest performance you've done? Why don't we start with Alana this time? Okay. The scariest performance I've done was about three years ago when I had to do a voice recital and I had to sing like two keys higher than I had practiced in. So my voice cracked like three times in public. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, for, for you non-singers out there and yeah, maybe you play like another instrument. If you play like a string instrument, it would be like transposing basically on the spot and, and having to play in different positions all over the place or piano, you know, you would have all these different like keys that you have to play. So, yeah. I think singing in general is very scary because you have to look at the audience. Yeah. On the, yeah. On the piano, you would never have to look at them. <laughs> even, for, <laughs> even for bowing, people usually say like, if you're nervous, just look at a random spot in the back. <laughs> Yeah, if I were a singer, I'd probably just stare right at the back wall and just like stare <laughs> straight at there, nowhere yeah, else. I usually just stare at the lights wherever they are so that it mm -hmm. looks like I'm looking at people, but I'm not. <laughs> is there like a, do they tell you like what to do with your hands while you're singing? Like, is mm -hmm. there a position you're supposed to, because no. like the instruments, our hands are already doing stuff, mm -hmm. so we don't have to think about that. <laughs> I'm just standing there. No, my hands are really awkward. Sometimes I <laughs> grabbed onto the mic and sometimes oh. I just like flapped them. <laughs> well, for I... most opera singers, I think they keep their hand on the side, right? Or something like that, where they put their, um, one hand one on their the hands on their like st on the stomach or something. Oh, yes, yes. If they sing like a recital, they'd like to like pose, oh, do a little pose yeah. on. The... Yeah. 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 Yeah, I accompanied for a voice teacher before and his favorite thing to say, like when the students are awkward and they are, they don't think about what to do with their body, then um, they usually like rock back and forth or like, yeah. or back and forth this way. And then his favorite thing to say is, you're making me seasick. Did you know that? And I'm just sitting <laughs> on my chair. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Nice. Okay, <laughs> let's go on to um, Susan, what is the scariest performance you have done? So there was one that uh, when I took the um, compositional class. So that is like a weird group that uh, um, you match your uh, team randomly. So in my team, there are two pianists, one tuba player and one percussion piece. So <laughs> and also we need to compose something. Oh, there is a one more. Yes, organist. So <laughs> it matched the song and then we need to compose something about 12 tone and uh, one minute long. And then uh, you need to uh, compose the, 
like uh, the 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 piece include all those instruments. Hmm. And the uh, yeah, that is kind of like scared when we um rehearsal doing the rehearsing. It sounds like really terrible, but we have to uh, finish it and then join the big class and perform in front of everyone. And the most interesting thing is the professor needs to record it. And uh, <laughs> to make a CD. <laughs> so it's like a CD in my laptop forever and never opened it. I don't know what did I do with all those instruments. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like hard. That is the uh, most, uh, yes, scared and uh, weird sound that I made and also in a performance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've tried to compose in the past. I not for me. Not for me either. <laughs> we'll leave it to Mark to do that. <laughs> just keep writing stuff and eventually you find something. And if not, just something just happens. That idea <laughs> away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think for me, the scariest performance I've done is uh, it was my, I believe, my senior recital in college. And I played a uh, uh, Rockberg um, viola sonata. And there's, I think, three pages for the first movement. And the, after the first page, you have to flip the page. Um, and the piece itself, like the whole first movement, there's really not any rest to be pausing and to like flip the page slowly and stuff like that. That's like one tiny little like quick moment and you just flip and you just gotta keep playing and so what happened was i played and i finished the first page and i reached over and i turned the page and i already got back to my playing position and i'm starting to play the next page and i watched my page just slowly <laughs> go back <laughs> to the first page i'm like oh oh uh, <laughs> but you know, I was still moving. It's a good thing that I practiced enough that I, my body was still just going at it without me like thinking about it. Cause I was just like, oh, you know, um, and I had two more pages to play. And I was, I, the thing was I couldn't stop anywhere. Uh, it would have been very awkward if I stopped. I don't know how my accompanists would have reacted to that too. Like they might have just stopped <laughs> or something. So I just kept playing. And it's good that I, since I practiced it enough, I had it memorized and I just memorized the rest of the first movement. Wow. Um, but it was, it was definitely scary. And um, I talked to um, some people after and I also did some research because that was actually the first time it's ever happened to me. And I'm thankful that I memorized it <laughs> because I would probably would have not know what to do on the spot if I like completely just like had a memory slip or not what comes next. Um, but for those of you, if, if you watch this video and you're like, you know, performing the next time you perform and you're memorizing all of a sudden you forgot your part and you have a accompanist next to you, you should look at their part. That's what you should do. You should walk right over and, and keep playing. Do not stop. Don't do anything else. Just keep playing, okay? <laughs> but that is scary. That was like, I remember people telling me that they they um they wish they could have just walked up and just turn the page for me because it was like, you <laughs> know, uh -huh. they all know the frustration and the, the you know, how it can be scary. Yep. Has it, have any one of you experienced that before? Um, not happened to me, but to the person I accompanied. <laughs> so that's why that's why Paul you said if you were just um what did you say like just walk away or something <laughs> or like start from yeah, the beginning yeah you would you would probably lose your accompanist <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um I tell all the students at a company or um whoever's performer performing if you forget anything I'm just gonna repeat the last chord I played and I'm just gonna keep playing it until you come in <laughs> <laughs> mm. But I sometimes I think now you can tell their, them though. Yeah, I sometimes play their parts, uh, especially yeah. if it's a younger student. So it'll remind. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it'll remind them so they can come back in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, the scariest thing that happened to me, um, actually not scary, but embarrassing, and I'd rather, I don't know, I'd rather go through a crack in the ground 
at the moment. <laughs> One, one time I was doing church, it was an actual live service and it was a guest conductor for the choir that day because the choir director went out of town. So not trying to impress or anything, but at least to help run it smoothly. I practice everything really well, um, except when I saw the bulletin, it says how many verses you play for a certain hymn. Every single week, it'll say like verse one to verse three or verse one to four or all of them whatever. Some, for some reason, I was so nervous on the day. It says verse one through four. And I did not look at the word through. So I thought they were going to sing verse one and then verse four. So um, in this situation, for the hymn notes, I am sitting at the organ to accompany. And then the very next piece, I have to walk up to the piano to get ready for the next piano piece. So there I am playing verse one playing verse four. I was so happy because I didn't make any mistakes on my foot pedal. And I stood up and I walked away from the organ and everyone was super extremely <laughs> silent. And then the choir director was just looking at me like, what are you doing? And then I didn't even know what's wrong. So I sat at my piano and I was like, what, what's up? I'm done with what I'm doing. And then I saw my other copy of the bulletin on the piano that says verse one through four. So my face turned so oh. red and then I was sweating all over. And luckily they just moved on to the next piece. So I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what did I just do? <laughs> so I emailed, I emailed the choir director. I was like, I am so sorry. <laughs> I didn't see it's one through four. So yeah, it's by that far the, scary. the scariest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Yeah, I can imagine I the kind cry. of feeling yeah like everybody is just staring at you and you're like oh what do do? it's the situation where you want to cry and no tears come out and then <laughs> and then there's you know the because I had a lot of old people in my church and they're so nice and they're so supportive because I don't play the organ but I'm I'm trying so hard and then they still say oh that was good or that you did a good job and then you know I'm I'm like I can't even say thank you because I'm so embarrassed <laughs> but anyways yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think Mark, you have it shared, <laughs> right? That's oh. oh my God, there's a lot. <laughs> with percussion, there's just so much stuff that always goes wrong. It's like this mallets fall off off your stand, or whatever. Or wait, what? Yeah, because like you have, have yeah, if you have mm -hmm. you're playing multiple like setups or whatever, you have. Uh, like you lay a music stand down and then you, you normally put a black towel on and then you rest all your mallets there. So uh, you have like a bunch of different mallets, timpani mallets, marimba mallets, vibe mallets and stuff. And then um, everything's always like close together because there's never enough room. Uh, so if you accidentally bump it or something and a stick rolls off and hits hits the drum or something at the wrong time or <laughs> even if it falls on the ground, it makes a huge loud noise. <laughs> That happens a lot. <laughs> um, uh, Wait, have you seen have you seen um, a a video? It's like a pretty popular clip of a percussionist, and I think he was he was a timpan timpani player. He's yeah. playing a piece, and then I think he was flipping the page. To <laughs> it's funny, he's flipping the page, and he decided to use his his like mallet to do it, I think like halfway or something. It didn't yeah. turn all the way, so he's just going like this and the yeah. music just <laughs> fell off the stand. And he was just like, da, 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 da. And then the conductor, I think he like messed up playing the conductor was just like, yeah, he's, he's just like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Or the other thing, this happens a lot often, like often too, more than you think. The, the crash cymbals, the straps sometimes break and then the symbol falls off and hits the ground or hits whatever instrument is underneath. And there's no way to hide it, no way to cover it up or whatever. Wait, that can, that actually happens? Yeah, because they're, they're, it's just like a leather strap and the symbol, uh -huh. uh, like the hole that the strap goes through, it like cuts away at the strap eventually. And then if you don't change it often enough or if it's an old strap, it breaks off. Mm, I guess that's something main, keeping a good maintenance yeah. on your on your yeah. instrument because yeah well, that would suck <laughs> yeah anytime you forget a triangle beater it's just nothing else you can use 
Oh, you mean the little stick, like you? The little stick, yeah. If you forget your your triangle beater, that's a big problem too. Uh, <laughs> you're just holding it, <laughs> and then like a dog. <laughs> you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So um, I have a question, Mark. Yeah. Um. So you know, for orchestras or band, there's like all the percussion players in the back, and then yeah. sometimes they have to move to a different instrument to get ready for the next part. Mm -hmm. Does it ever happen to someone or happen to you that you accidentally went to the wrong instrument? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> I mean, like, because you're you're thinking so far ahead of like, okay, I need to go run to this place in like one minute or, or whatever. Or usually a little more than that, but um, if you're like thinking so far ahead, sometimes you just blank out and skip the, the wrong passage, and you're like, oh crap, I'm in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Oh no. You, it, that's like. The good thing about percussion is everybody kind of knows each other's parts well enough that they'll tell you, oh, you're in the wrong place. We're actually here still or something like that. Um, That's nice. Because uh, all the percussion parts, usually on like the percussion music, they have more than just your part also. So you can listen to other people and see where they are if you get lost also, which you shouldn't, you should be counting all the time. Mm. But, um but still yeah so that's that's a nice way to see everybody's part or at least in the percussion percussion section yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh i wish we had that in the string sections so yeah you got to count yeah where <laughs> more, yeah more sections should have that <laughs> honestly you know what we do we just um the if we have a super long rest and it's like different instruments playing like you know one of the woodwinds or brass or some somebody else we would just write down the instrument name above mm. like depending yeah. on where they start and then where they start and we we'll just keep track of that because sometimes your measures rests are like 50 measures long yeah. and you're just sitting there like oh <laughs> it's like you you yeah. can easily just lose track and then just not know where you're at yeah Mm -hmm. yeah all right okay well that's kind of scary and definitely made me think of a lot of <laughs> even more scary stuff but let's move on to the next question so our next question is what scary sounds can you make on your instrument uh, let's start with carol because i know she has something prepared for us uh yes i do so um, i'm gonna demonstrate in just a moment something i heard in the anime but anyways um there's something you can try at home if you have a grand piano so um once you press your sustain pedal for those of you i have some younger students who don't know what it is it's the right most pedal you have on your piano um, if you have a grand piano so it has to be a grand piano i think upright doesn't work as well because you don't hear the sound but um, anyways, you press it down and then it releases all the strings. And sometimes if you press it down quickly and hard enough, you hear the release of the string. It's like a booming of sound. And then what you wanna try is um, get your face really close to the string and then sing or speak to it. And it creates like that echo effect. So um, since it's almost Halloween, my husband was telling the kids a ghost story. And then he said, you know, you go into this empty house and it's like a castle, no one's there. And then uh, your brother got lost. So you're calling him to see where he is. And then he, he released all the strings and then he called from inside like the sound, sound board of the piano. And then it creates that like empty house echo effect. It's pretty cool. So you can try it at home. That It won't damage your piano as long as you don't spit into it. <laughs> um, I was about then, to say. <laughs> right. So make sure you don't have any like stuff that can spill. Um, and yeah. another thing that inspired me um, was the movie Spirited Away. Um, mm. So it's there's a really scary part where um, the bad witch was talking to this little girl. And then if you guys have seen the movie, her face is huge and her hair got crazy because she got mad. So it's flying all over the place. And then she's like nose to nose with this little girl and then like poking at her and then calling her names and making fun of her saying like you're lazy and stuff. Anyways, um, at that moment, uh, there was this music where it's very easily done on any keyboard or piano. So I'm moving to my piano here. If you just play like the highest keys on your piano and then the lowest octave, Hold on, let me see. And you can play any of the keys. So I'm playing the very highest B octave with my right hand and the low, lowest B on the piano. And 
but you can do some uh, chromatic on the black keys as long as it's like really far apart octaves i'm sure it sounds even better on a grand piano because you have all the ring going on uh so anyways that's the scary sound i can make on my instrument i might have just thought of a really really bad prank for those of you watching this video of you on a grand piano at home imagine like like you're it's like nighttime and the house is like dark and your like parents came downstairs or something and then you're oh, at the yeah. grand piano and you just boom yeah and play <laughs> that really would loudly scare, too. that would scare some people probably oh actually hopefully. one more idea um last year we went trick-or-treating and then uh, there was this piano um, teacher, like she's advertising for her students. So she's giving away flyers with her candy. And then, um, so this teacher was just playing in her room on the piano with the uh, blind open with like spooky decorations on the window and has like a spotlight on her. And then she's just playing the Moonlight Sonata the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and then so people walk by they like look at her and then it's like really creepy because if you know that piece it's um well I don't think it's creepy but I think in that situation it really attracts a lot of attention yeah it's a little dark it's a little <laughs> mm -hmm. bit dark yeah all right um let's see I well I can demonstrate something on my instrument so the scariest sound I mean there's I think there's quite a few composers have like used a lot in um for the strings and i think it's more like an effect like i i'm sure mark knows this but uh one of the things that you can do on the string instruments called ponticello and ponticello is basically playing your bow really close to this uh bridge which makes it sound kind of nasally so it kind of sounds mm -hmm. like this this is like a regular tone and it sounds like this but you move it towards the bridge and it goes It becomes very inconsistent and composers like to use that and pair it up with tremolo which is when you play your bow really fast so like mm -hmm. you know and then you'll you'll hear like in the movie they'll like oh, you know like oh. something is about to happen or something you know you can do that with like a tritone if you play like um so like Oh, yeah. You know, and then like some of these like, like creeping up on you or something like that. <laughs> really like fast. That spine tingling going up. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's something you know. Um, there's also, uh, I guess they call it Bartok pits. Uh, Bartok, the composer. I think he he's the one maybe invented it. I'm not sure, but it's basically you pull the string upwards oh. instead of to the side and it snaps down against the fingerboard instead of like a nice like it goes it hits the, the fingerboard on the bottom and creates this like percussive um sounding uh you know effect which is you know something if you use it i guess in the right moment it can be it can be a little daunting yeah but I'm sure there's a lot of things that, you know, you can do on the instruments. Like if you play cello or something, I know you can do the, the Jaws thing. That would work perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's something you guys can try. You know, if you play violin or honestly, any, any of the string instruments will probably work. And you just put your bow really close to the bridge and you play tremolo really fast. You, you'll hear this ponted cello sound. All right, well, Alana, what about you? What's the scariest sound you can make on your instrument? <laughs> You're a singer, so this ought to be interesting. Uh... Oh, I like that. <laughs> That's called like a the zombie. velociraptor. Oh, so... okay, okay. <laughs> would you be able to, wait, how would you do a zombie then if that's... The raptor. Uh, oh! oh, that's pretty good. Thank you. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Do can you do like the? This at home. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you do like the throat? Uh, I don't know what what it's called, but like a throat gurgling sound that like Japanese movies like to use. 
Oh, the Gretsch salad. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That used to freak me out so much. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. Yeah. That would be scary if you, like, went up to somebody at night mm. and they're, like, sleeping or something. Oh, like, mm. I used Don't to do, do that. it at home. <laughs> <laughs> I used to make that sound without realizing that I was making that sound because I'd just zone out and start going, ah. <laughs> oh gosh so people walking by you are like <laughs> <laughs> what <did she> do? <laughs> yeah that's interesting there are some dinosaur sounds for you very cool very cool <laughs> i would probably sound terrible if i try that so i'm not gonna gonna try <laughs> <laughs> try <laughs> <laughs> um anyways just that what's something that um scary sounding you can do on your instrument hear the piano i don't know how to do it on my piano <laughs> i don't want to do it either so uh, for some song on a prepared piano it's really sounds scared has a some like a similar voice or song like a string instrument Thing, like plunking the string or whatever, but I really don't know how to do it on my piano. It's really mm -hmm. some people like very professional. You shouldn't do it on your piano. <laughs> no, please don't do that on your piano. There's yeah, there's usually one piano per university that has a prepared piano and it says do not do it on the piano. I think they stuff like um like pieces of paper, um, also little pieces of nail. Some yeah. metal pieces in there. Um, they also use like string bows to play the, yeah. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> but yeah, that most <laughs> that one famous piece, right, Banshee, is mm -hmm. done on a prepared piano. Yeah, it actually sounds really, really fancy. <laughs> I guess like it's, when I first heard it, I had no idea the name was called Banshee, and that was the first thing that popped in my head. And then when mm -hmm. I found out the name was Banshee, I was like, oh, okay, well. The composer did a good job. <laughs> Probably the most accurate name for any <laughs> classical. Like music. really, yeah, it, it's it's really interesting. Yeah, but don't do that on your own piano if you guys have like a grand piano. <laughs> your parents will be very mad at you. <laughs> Unless you want to change into one. Oh, <laughs> mommy, I need a new piano. <laughs> you can just ask them to buy you something that's like on Craigslist for like you know fifty dollars or something. Oh. And just like. You can do, do what whatever you want to that one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody's gone through their scary sounds on their instruments. Mark, or anything Mark? you want to add? I did the water phone in the beginning, but... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So there's, there's a few things. Um, I can't demonstrate any of them. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, the... Okay, so I'll go through two. There's one, both of them involve a symbol. Um, if you have, you have a timpani, like the big, also like a kettle drum, they're called, uh, they're usually the big copper looking, um, drums in the back of the orchestra. There's usually four or five of them, but if you put a suspended cymbal upside down on it, so it's like dished, um, and you put it on top of the timpani head, you can roll your cymbal mallets on the on the cymbal and then change the the pedal of the timpani which tunes the head so it can make the pitch go higher and lower so while you're rolling on the cymbal you can change with your foot the, the tuning on the timpani and it makes like a weird sort of ghostly moaning sound sort of depending <laughs> on how you play it but, um it happens it happens a lot in percussion music <laughs> they do a lot of weird things um and then the other thing if you have like a regular suspended cymbal, so on a stand, not on a drum or anything, um, but then take like a violin bow or a cello bow, usually because they're a bit longer. Um, if you hold the, the cymbal so it doesn't move too much and then you bow, I don't have a stick either. Oh, I'll use this. So if you bow, so pretend this is a bow. Uh, symbols here. So if you run the bow against the edge of the symbol, it mm. makes a really screechy, ugly sound. Mm. Yeah. You can also screechy. do that. 
Yeah. You can also do it if you have a stick and the symbol, like pretend this is a symbol and you run the stick like that way. Um, if you get it to like kind of skip over the symbol the right way, it does the same thing, but the bow is way better. It sounds creepier. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That just makes me think of uh, how, you know, how all, a lot of uh, scary movies, they, they do like sound effects. I mean, I'm sure like a lot of regular movies do like sound effects and you got like people just grabbing random things and trying to find the right sound that fits yeah. with like what the movie is showing. Yeah. Yeah. It's something, it's something very cool. It's definitely a profession. Uh, it's yeah. probably a lot of fun too. <laughs> yeah. You know, trying to match the sound with what you see, like when people smash watermelons or whatever. For <laughs> <sound>. <laughs> that is, that is true. Okay. So let's go to um, the next question that we have. And there's the last question. So the last question is what is the scariest lesson you have experienced so i guess by lesson we can go into like private lesson we can go into like master classes type of setting is fine too but what is something that is super scary um for you guys that's uh why don't we start with um design this time well um i think there's a lot of very scared lessons <laughs> happened to all of us, I think. <laughs> Private lessons, master classes, or whatever. Yeah, so, uh, but in head of my, uh, that's, um, I remember there was, uh, actually, it's a rehearsal, uh, seemed like a lesson. That was when I was like 14, 15 years old. That's, um, I need to uh, play the Tchaikovsky number one piano concerto with the orchestra, a real orchestra, not the second piano. Um, and uh, that is a, maybe first a rehearsal I was going through with them. So it was very scared because I don't know how to play real orchestra instead of a second piano. Because with the second piano, you always can let him or her to follow you, right? And um, you just need to memorize your part very well, that's it. But uh, I was I remember that uh, I need to sit there and uh, look at the conductor and the first violin, and also I look at the second violin, and uh, I was so scared, and uh, many, many measures that cannot get together very well. So it really makes me shy and embarrassing and sad at that time so yeah, it's like a very scared yeah wow i know play i playing with an orchestra it is is something different mm -hmm. than just rehearsing you know with an accompanist type of thing yeah uh, and sometimes it's a lot more to consider we met a uh, very serious and uh, of course the conductor is all serious and uh, they correct your beat and uh, it feels you always rush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> it is, it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but that reminded me of one, um, I guess it's not really a lesson. It was like a competition for a pianist. I think you guys probably have heard of that. I don't remember which piano competition it was, but this guy walked out onto stage and he was supposed to play a uh Chopin like one of the concertos oh never mind I don't, no no he was playing with the orchestra mm. but i think he prepared two concertos and they let him know he was supposed to play one of them and he walked on the stage and they started a different concerto <laughs> Oh, oh, no. and he just like and he just but he played it he just played it and then wow. i was like oh boy like that's crazy you were no you're told to play this and then let, they just they didn't let him know he, you can see on his face this is like on youtube and it's like definitely one of the big things but it's like you know you can see just how much he's just like mm. he's just like playing <laughs> i'm like whoa <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh but Let's see. Alana, what about you? What is the scary experience? I don't have a specific one, but anytime it was the week <clears throat> leading up to a choir performance or a musical, 
it was always scary because most of the other students didn't take it seriously. So we had a lot to practice and we got yelled at a lot. <laughs> it was really scary. <laughs> but nothing specific. Mm. Is it just me or like teachers? I mean, we're teachers, but teachers get more scary as the recital day comes closer and closer. Oh, right? yeah. No, it's, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Things are um, getting really scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Well, for me personally, scariest lesson, it was probably for playing in a master class. And it, I think the reason it was a little bit scary, it was because it's, it was last minute. Uh, we were told last minute and it was also uh, playing for basically my favorite uh, violist of all time. Um, her name is Kim Kashkashian, um, not Kim Kardashian, Kim <laughs> Kashkashian. Okay, mm -hmm. for those of you that are wondering. Um, but uh, she teaches at New England Conservatory, and she's just really, really good. Um, but I was told last minute, uh, this was during like an uh, orchestra break, uh, my teacher just came to the viola section and just told the violas like, oh, well, you guys are going to be playing <laughs> in the master class for Kim. And then we're like, oh, okay. And so that was scary. I mean, I, I, just because it's her and and just like a master class and just last minute it was just so you know it's never it's never a good feeling to just suddenly be put on the spot especially for you know somebody that you look up to a lot as a musician um it's always a little little bit scary yeah anybody else can relate to that have you ever played for somebody that you're like you know look up to a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> no <laughs> no. <laughs> well, let's go. Uh, let's go to Mark. What about you? What's the scariest lesson you have experienced? Scariest lesson. Uh, pretty much. There's a lot. I mean, <laughs> anytime you walk into a lesson and the teacher wants you to do something that you weren't practicing before <laughs> or aren't prepared for. Um, let me see, what's a good example? Oh, well here, this is for something else. So I, I used to take um, like conducting classes also. Um, so for one of our lessons, we had to conduct an orchestra one of like whatever we were rehearsing, I guess we picked, I forget what it was, we picked something, but if you, there's no way to like prepare for everybody looking up at you and waiting for you to, to run a rehearsal or anything. So it was super stressful leading up to it. And it normally like, you know, when you're performing and you finally start playing or whatever, it just, you forget it and your anxiety goes away this doesn't happen when you're thing because <laughs> you're still you're still thinking about it and um there's always something you're worried that you're gonna forget or um because everybody's like looking at you waiting for you to cue something or or something like that and if you forget you're like oh no i just missed that but hopefully you guys mm -hmm. think <laughs> so i think that was really stressful that kind of stuff yeah i can kind of relate the very first time I've conducted an orchestra before was in high school when my yeah. orchestra teacher allowed me to do so. And we we're playing like Pegasus, I think that's what it was called. And it's just for a string orchestra. But I remember like leading up to it, I just <laughs> I would really carefully like try to map out everything that I'm doing and yeah. like go through it like probably 50 times and uh, just to make sure everything is like is like spot on. Um, yeah there. but after you get past that though it is pretty fun conducting it is fun it's yeah. Pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's definitely a skill to learn yeah, yeah. don't get to use it okay. <laughs> yeah yeah and carol yeah um scariest was, lesson um i'm just gonna share one extra thing actually it's not a lesson it's a class and this professor 
Um, he is really, he's such a genius, but he's moody. Um, so we refer to him as the Beethoven in the department because he's always, um, I heard he, he um, maybe is alcoholic, I'm not sure, but he always comes in with like messy hair and red eyes, like pink eyes. Um, I just remember he was teaching counterpoint um, or some composition class and then he got really angry at these um, couple girls who were using Hello Kitty um, music staff paper. <laughs> you know how like a lot of girls, oh. I mean, we're still young back then, they like the cutesy stuff and then they have, these um, music set papers with the Hello Kitty logos on them, like on the top corner, he just got so mad, like banging on the table and yelling at them mad. He was like, this is a, this is a college class and you guys are not serious and, and bringing me um, like these kind of papers for homework and stuff. Anyways, that's just a side thing. <laughs> <laughs> so um <That's> funny. so <laughs> i know i was like that's so silly <laughs> yeah with actual hello kitties on them anyways um so um while i was at iu there was this um piano professor i we can't mention names right well anyways i'm not going to um whatever but he is um, i think he should be more famous than he is a lot of people don't know his name but he is basically the god for piano teaching and everything he says is like the Bible for me. <laughs> and so I go to his master class every single week. And then I finally got a chance to have a lesson with him. This is after my master recital. I'm playing the same piece. I was working on Schumann, Chrysleriana. If you guys don't know the piece, check it out. It's like 30, 30 something minutes of music, um, very difficult. And I, I saved my money, it's like a couple hundred dollars for that one hour lesson. Um, because he knows I go to watch him every time. So he gave me like 90 minutes, which is really nice. Um, the whole 90 minutes, I played, I think, less than 16 measures of the music, the first movement. And then he stopped me and then he said, Carol, you have to move your fingers from the right joint because basically I've learned my technique wrong my whole life. And then he spent about like 45 minutes teaching me how to move my thumb. And then he said, no, 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 don't even put your hands on the piano. You need to like dangle your hands down below the seat so you know how it feels. And then he's basically teaching me how to move my thumb in like at a slight angle. I don't even remember exactly anymore. I recorded the whole lesson because I don't want to miss anything. And then we we're just doing that. And he said, no, 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 it's this way. No, 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 it's, it's on this side. <laughs> and then after that 45 minutes, we work on a five finger pattern for the rest of the lesson. And I was just sweating. My whole body was sweating like <laughs> every part of me because I feel like I cannot even play a single note correctly on the piano. It's not really scary. It's just very like self-conscious because he's correcting everything. And I feel like I can't even breathe because it'll be the wrong way to breathe. <laughs> so anyways, I heard, I heard later from his students that sometimes they just spend a whole semester working on five finger patterns so that they can undo all of their bad habits and then do it the right way. And that's why they all have amazing technique and they can play whatever they want without a single missed notes. <laughs> So anyways, that's yeah. my, this that's is my most technique. intense, mm -hmm. most um, intense technique lesson is ever. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. I've heard <laughs> stories like that um, on mm -hmm. string instruments um, where, you know, you go to take a lesson at, at a famous school, famous teacher, and you work on like two notes, two notes or even one, the first note of the piece, and you just work on it for, for the entire lesson, an hour. And you would do that for like three lessons, three weeks in a row, just on one note, because that's how much it matters when it comes to technique to, to surf music, a correct technique to surf the music. Um, or like I, I've heard uh, where, um, I'm not gonna mention any schools or, or, or names, um, but uh, there was a violinist um, going to a university, a very famous university and the teacher there, um, when when they when the teacher taught him, and the, and the first basically like the first few months, he played basically only scales. <laughs> he only played scales, and this is like a graduate 
yeah. graduate degree. This is not like, oh, I just came out of high school. I'm going to take lessons in, in college. This is like you've played for four years in the college music school and then you go to grad school after. And they're just like, huh, you play scales every single day because technique is like that important. All the bad habits, all those unnecessary movements, like you got to get rid of all of that. And that cannot be worked on unless you like zero in and put in a lot of time and effort in. That is crazy. So. All right. Well, is anybody else got any scary la lessons last minute? No? Okay. Well, I <laughs> guess that's it for, for everybody. I'm, I'm sure there's like a whole bunch of like, you know, <laughs> lessons and like stories that's going through our head, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. we can always <laughs> save it for the next Halloween. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching and that's it for for today's podcast our very first podcast and yeah. we hope you guys enjoyed it you know give give ourselves a little round of applause yeah, mm. for doing this podcast <laughs> um unfortunately we have we have teachers that couldn't be with us today but you know as we go with more podcasts in the future we're hoping to be able to get more teachers um, and other teachers to be able to do this um, so please look forward to it. And if you have any suggestions, any topics that you would like us to discuss, uh, please leave it down in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Everyone give it a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you uh, would like to be notified um, of a new video when we, when we come up with a new one, please hit the subscribe button and also the bell button so you get a notification. And with that, thanks for watching. Bye. Happy Halloween. Bye. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween.